In this video, we're going to talk about the top destinations for a few big name Portland Trail Blazers players that could be on the move this offseason. As the Blazers rebuild, there's been a lot of discussion around their logjam of guards, as well as what veterans to keep on the roster and what veterans to ship out. And my expectation is one of the three players that we're going to talk about today are going to be on the move. Of course, there are 29 teams in the NBA, so there could be a ton of different destinations for all these players. However, I feel like these are the best fits, not only because this player fits well on that team, but also they have the assets that make sense as a return package to the Blazers for that player. Without further ado, let's talk about player number one, who is Malcolm Brogdon who a lot of people expected to be traded at the NBA trade deadline, but the Blazers held on to. Now, there is a whole debate about how much trade value he has. There's debate about his injury that caused him to miss the final couple of the years and how that might affect his overall trade return. And I got two destinations in mind for Malcolm Brogdon. The first one is the Philadelphia 76ers if they strike out in free agency. The Blazers are over the luxury tax line right now, and they definitely want to duck that. They didn't want to pay the luxury tax even when they were trying to build a win. Winner. So now that they're in a rebuild, they're certainly going to try and shed salary this offseason while the Philadelphia 76ers are preserving cap space to make a run at Paul George or some other big name players. However, if they can't get PG and they lose some of their own free agents and they have cap space remaining, I think Malcolm Brogdon would be a really good fit next to Tyrese Maxey as he could play off of him and he could be that secondary playmaker. He could be a guy that runs pick and rolls with Joel Embiid. The Sixers could stagger both those guards and keep one of them on the floor at all times. And in the best case scenario, the Blazers could simply get off Malcolm Brogdon's $22 million. And not only would that allow them to duck the luxury tax, but it also could open up a full mid-level exception depending on other moves. In destination number two for Malcolm Brogdon, I don't think makes much sense for the team he'd be traded to, but supposedly they have interest in him. And if they do, there's a perfect trade out there for the Blazers. And that is the Houston Rockets, who hold the third overall pick in this year. NBA draft. Apparently, they've been very interested in Malcolm Brogdon despite having a lot of perimeter players such as Josh Green, Fred Van Vliet, Amen Thompson, Cam Whitmore, Dylan Brooks. I don't know how they would shake out that rotation. Maybe Amen Thompson could play some power forward, but the Houston Rockets actually have a lot of depth, but supposedly they want Malcolm Brogdon, and I love that destination because I would love for the Blazers to get their hands on that third overall pick. If it's shedding salary and trading up from seven to three, that's very very intriguing to me, especially given that there's a greater than 0% chance that Alex Saar falls to the third overall pick. Donovan Klingon's gotten some love at number one, Zachary Risache's gotten some love at number two, and that would be my dream trade for Malcolm Brogdon, being able to attach number seven to him and trade up high enough to get Alex Saar. I think it's very, very unlikely, but it's something to keep an eye on. Now let's move on to Jeremy Grant. And when I was trying to come up with ideal destinations for Grant, I was trying to find teams that needed an offensive punch that rebounded the ball well on the defensive end. We all know Jeremy Grant struggles to rebound the ball. Defensively, he hasn't been all too good in Portland, but offensively, he packs a punch. And he can still be a part of a good defense if he has less responsibility trying to stop guards on the perimeter. So destination number one for Jeremy Grant is the Miami Heat, who were the fifth best defense last year, but the 21st best offense. Meanwhile, they were the second best defensive rebounding team, and they could use a little bit more star power there next to Jimmy Butler. Now, there has been rumors about Butler potentially going elsewhere. Pat Riley had some scathing comments after the season in a press conference, but Jeremy Grant could come in and be that number two or number three option, playing off Jimmy Butler, playing off Bam Adebayo, and I think that would be a really good offensive fit. I think the defense would still be as good, and Miami has the rebounding to be able to bring in Jeremy Grant and not have that be an issue. Destination number two for Jeremy Grant is the Sacramento Kings, who after snapping their playoff drought in 2023, missed the playoffs in 2024, and is probably going to look for a little bit of an infusion of talent, especially at a forward spot this coming offseason. Keegan Murray is entrenched at one of the forward spots, but I think Jeremy Grant makes sense as a complement at the other forward spot next to Murray. Sacramento was 12th offensively and 13th defensively last year. That's based off adjusted offensive and defensive rating. And they also were the best defensive rebounding team in the league. 
The Blazers might be able to get a future pick from the Kings in return for Grant, as well as some matching salary, Trey Lyles, Sasha Vizankov, maybe Harrison Barnes gets thrown into the trade, who knows. Now let's move on to our final player, and that is Anthony Simons. And there is one destination for Anthony Simons because it makes so much sense that if Simons gets traded this offseason, I would be surprised if this isn't the team that's going to trade for him, and that is the Orlando Magic. The Magic makes sense for both Jeremy Grant and Malcolm Brogdon too, but I wanted to save them for Anthony Simons. The Magic surprised some people last year. They got a fifth seed, they lost in game seven in the first round, and they were very, very good defensively. They were the third ranked defense, but only the 22nd ranked offense, and they were also the third best defensive rebounding team. So like I said, Jeremy Grant could make some sense, but what the Magic really need is a guard that can make shots and play on and off the ball. Shot creation was a problem for the Magic in the playoffs against the Cavaliers. Their number one and number two options are Paulo Bancaro and Franz Wagner. Both guys are forwards who can handle the ball a little bit, initiate some offense, can be called point forwards in a way. And the Magic didn't really run with a traditional point guard last year. Anthony Simons is Anthony Simons is a little bit of a combo guard, but in Orlando next to ball handling forwards, he wouldn't have as much responsibility to initiate offense for others. He could focus more on being the lethal scorer that we know him to be and would provide that Orlando offense the shot making and the creation and the floor spacing that it needs to improve offensively. The Magic had the second worst mid-range shooting percentage in the league and ranked 24th best from three. They need an infusion of jump shooting ability. Anthony Simons gives them that. Also, Anthony Simons grew up in the area. It would basically be a homecoming for him and the Magic do have enough assets to get the Blazers a justifiable return on Anthony Simons. We can debate those assets. They have some young players like Anthony Black and Jet Howard, who are the 6th and 11th picks in last year's drafts, respectively. They also have the 18th pick in this year's draft. They have future picks as well. They also have cap space going into this summer, so the Blazers could save a lot of money if they waited to make this trade happen in free agency. So there's a lot of reasons why the Orlando Magic are a great fit for Anthony Simons. Let me know what you think of these destinations for these three Blazers players down in the comment section below. Are there any destinations you would add to the list for these guys? Let me know. And with that being said, I'm out of here. I'll catch you next time. Until then, as always, peace out. Go Blazers.